All right, what's going on everybody? So in today's video, I'm gonna be analyzing a deal I, I got. Uh, this was actually a pretty good lead. It was very close to being a deal. And honestly, I'm probably gonna look back like six months from now and look what it sold for and be like, crap, I should have bought that condo. So let me know at the end of this video if you think you would have bought this or not. And before we jump into this video, please smash that like button. And that being said, let's get into it. So here's the information uh, on the seller. This was actually just a two bedroom, two bath condo. Uh, it was in the stages of being uh, fixed up. It's an inherited property. So I actually got this from, this was a direct mail lead where the seller just emailed me. He didn't give me his phone number. So we've kind of been communicating via just email. But here's the address, it's on the first floor. So that was the first thing that concerned me a little bit. This condo building, it seems to not really have that big of an effect. Some condo buildings, the first floor is gonna have a huge effect, but this one, um, it actually, because there's like a patio on the first floor units, it actually helps a little bit. So uh, one bathroom model, kitchen in progress, bed, bed bathroom painted, still needs second bath refreshed. So it seems like it needs a little bit of work. It's probably livable besides the kitchen, uh, probably just needs some updating. So the first thing I do when I get uh, a property like this is I just go to the tax record. So here's a tax record on the property um, and I look for the square footage because with condos, square footage is a big deal. You know, a house, two or 300 square feet might not make that big of a difference, but a condo, especially on the first floor, that's gonna be a big difference. So it's 1,015 square feet, two bedrooms, two baths. Um, so what I did was I pulled up all the two bedroom, two baths in this same condo complex that have sold over the past year. So this is how I come up with my after renovated value. So fortunately there was, there was nine comps. Sometimes when you do condo searches, there might only be a couple that have sold. So you kind of have to be really conservative. This, um, you can see this one, the sale price. And then there's also some of these have seller concessions. So sometimes when you're in lower price points, there's, there's concessions given. So you always have to check for that. So 157 minus 2000, so really 155. This one sold for about 153. Um, this one's coming soon at 150. This is 147. Um, so the, the, on the high end, and these are about the same square footage, 1,050, 1,050, 1,059. This one's 1,015. So that was actually the same square footage. Um, so I'm going to look pretty closely at square footage. And then also this is unit 101. Uh, this might, oh no, this is the unit next door. So this one's going to be listed at, uh, 150. Um, Oh, it looks like it sold recently. Oh no, so that's a different address, 101. But so there's a couple sales at, at, at 150. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna see how renovated some of these comps are. So this one looks like it's pretty well. I mean, it's not, not I mean, it has recessed lights, hardwood floors, um, bathroom's been renovated. Um, this bathroom's been somewhat updated. It's nice, you know, night it's painted. Um, the washer dryer that's newer, the balcony. Let me just go back to the interior. Um, so the kitchen's been somewhat updated, it's got stainless steel cabinets, a newer. I mean, so it, it's not like a full gut renovation. I'm not going to have to, for a two bedroom condo, 1,015 square feet, I'm not going to have to spend like 50,000, even if the because I, I'm I'm probably gonna, you know, I made this guy an offer without even seeing the property. And I'll tell you what I made the offer at. Um, but let me just get a couple more. So this is pretty nice, you know. So this is a newer kitchen. I don't know what's up with this countertop. Um, but they have recessed lights. I'm assuming the recessed lights were added on. So that's gonna be a little bit of an expense. New paint, new floors. See, the bathrooms aren't even like fully renovated. It's, you know, it's got the old yellow tile. It hasn't been that up. Yeah, you know, this bathroom hasn't been that updated. So, you know, I'm going to budget this repair costs. So this guy, you know, one bathroom remodeled, kitchen in progress, both bedrooms painted. So I, I'm going to budget this repair cost. It may be like 25000 which might even be on the high side. So it's going to be about... Let's say fifteen for the kitchen, and then ten thousand for let's say like recessed lights plus if the HVAC or hot water heater needs to be replaced or just other different expenses. There's not going to be too many variables with a condo, so we're going to put the repair budget at twenty five thousand. We're going to put the after renovated value. This is at one fifty five. 
This is 153, 150. Because this is on the first floor, and because this area is a little bit further away from typically where I like to buy, I'm gonna put the after renovated value at 150. So 25,000 repairs, 150 is the after renovated value. Now, like I said, I've been communicating with this guy via email. He doesn't have a, usually I prefer to call somebody obviously or even meet them in person, but this is what he's looking for for the property. If given a fair offer of 100000 he would sell it ASAP. If not, I'll continue to remodel and sell via an agent later this year. So as you can see, I responded back. You know, the first ones take a little bit longer. There was one that sold for 100000 that was listed on the market. I think it needed a little bit of work. So I offered him 80000 and he actually, he actually kept it at 100000 So I'm going to pull out the deal analyzer right now and kind of show you what the numbers would look like. And this is, you know, 80,000, I would, I would buy it, you know, pretty much without seeing it, but let me pull up the deal analyzer. Okay. So here's my fancy deal analyzer. Um, so we're going to plug some numbers in and see if this works. So the sale price, that was the after renovated value 150, you know, it might be 155, but I want to be a little bit conservative. Uh, the purchase price, he wants a hundred thousand. Okay, I offered him 80, he wants 100. Uh, closing costs, we put in about two and a half percent. Repairs, you know, I'm gonna put in 25,000. That might be a little bit on the high side. Let, let's go with 20,000. So that's about 10,000 for a kitchen, 10,000 for everything else. And like you said, some of it's been updated. And these properties here that sell for 150, they're not fully renovated either. So it's not like I have to do a gut renovation. So we'll do 20,000. Um, interest is 12,000 if I use hard money. Carrying costs about 2,500, sales commission 9,000. So with this numbers, like 100,000 sounds like a really good deal if they sell for 150, but if we see down here, the net profit is only 2,000 bucks. So obviously that doesn't make too much sense. However, I would say I was considering doing this deal because number one, if I financed it myself, right? If I just put, if I didn't use hard money, I would save 12,000 bucks right there. I mean, the money theoretically could be used for something else, but I would save 12,000 if I put a, you know, put my own money there. So that'd be a hundred thousand dollars into the deal. Next up, because I'm a licensed agent, I would also save, you know, about $5,000 right there. So that's 15,000 that I would save. So now when we take 15 and we add it to two, that's a $17,000 profit on a pretty low risk type of deal. The reason I say low risk is because you know, it's a pretty low price point. There's, there's pretty solid comps and it doesn't need a lot of work. You know, I could probably be in and out of this renovation after like two, two weeks. I mean, literally just one week, but between getting contractors and everything, you know, two, two to three weeks, I could probably be done and get this thing listed and potentially make a profit of 17,000 and 17,000 is, you know, 200 K a year just for like a little condo like this. Um, however, I, I passed up on this deal because number one, you know, I, I'm stretching myself a little bit on this one, you know, to, to, to make a $2,000 profit. I mean, theoretically 17,000, um, it's just a little bit tight. You know, if he had, I probably would have done, I offered him nine, I offered him 80,000 and he, and I thought, I mean, usually when a seller says I want a hundred thousand or 500,000 and then you offer lower, they usually meet you in the middle or they come down a little bit. This guy was pretty set in his numbers. So if he had just come down to like 90,000, um, that's a net profit of 13,000, but then plus interest of, of, you know, plus another 15. So that's about a $30,000 profit. I definitely would have done it at 90,000. Um, so if you want a copy of this deal analyzer, um, there's a copy of my website, the link is below, but that's, you know, you gotta, you gotta use the MAO formula, the 70% formula, but you also have to bring out the deal analyzer because sometimes if it's a low risk, I was very close to just saying, you know what? Yeah, I'll make 2000 or 17000 on this deal. So I passed up on the deal for now, but, you know, who knows? I'm going to stay in touch with this seller. Um, a lot of times sellers will drop their price after, you know, a couple months. If maybe the something happens, repairs are taking too long, he's just getting fed up. Uh, there's different reasons why sellers will lower their price and call you. I've had plenty of sellers that have dropped. I had one seller that dropped the price by a hundred thousand. Call me back a year later with a hundred thousand dollar price drop. And I was able to buy that property. So stay in touch with the sellers. Um, 
and also let me know if you think if you would have bought that deal let me know um because I, I think i'm going to look this property up in about three months and i'm going to see if it sells for like 160 or something like that i'm going to be pissed <laughs> especially since these weren't fully renovated but that's basically how i analyze deals i use the mayo formula i use the deal analyzer um and I, I take into account the size of the renovation. Like I would never do like a hundred thousand dollar renovation to make two thousand or fifteen thousand dollars. But if I'm only putting in fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to the deal in terms of the renovation costs, you know, I you know I'm pretty happy with that deal. And also like the lowest property that sold in this neighborhood sold at one nineteen or one seventeen, so one twenty, one twenty five. I mean, so I could buy it at a hundred thousand. And almost just probably relist it for 120 if I really wanted to. I don't know if the numbers would work as well at that price, but sometimes people just do that. Sometimes people just buy it and relist it, and that that can be a good strategy. That's called wholetailing. So if the property is not in like horrible condition, like this one, I think was in probably pretty livable condition, you can just relist it, clean it out, um, do some landscaping, or you know just make sure it looks somewhat presentable, and then just relist it on the on the market. So. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll look this property up. Uh, here's the address right there if you want to tell me what it sold for. If it sold for a lot, definitely don't tell me though because I might be kind of pissed. But uh, thanks for watching and definitely uh, subscribe. Please like, please share, and let me know if you have any comments. And I will see you on the next one. All right, bye.